Thank you very much. My name is Sergio. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Artivive. And today uh, I will talk about augmented reality being the art form of the 21st century. Uh, but a little bit about me. My background is in marketing. I was the creative director of an agency for many years where I was able to uh, conduct big campaigns around the world uh, using augmented reality, like in this example for automotive for Volkswagen, where I was able to learn how the narrative can be built and also how people are interacting with this medium, how far they are willing to go to interact and also to give the input required by the space. Um, it's great to use uh, somebody else's money to <laughs> learn things. And um, after five years working in the space and as creative myself, I saw that um, augmented reality has a big potential for arts and for creative spaces. Um, seeing myself as an artist, from the beginning I had to decide if I want to be a traditional artist, and unfortunately I'm not really good at drawing. Um, so I decided to somehow go into the digital space. Um, but for the last year I was asking me myself, why isn't there a link between these two worlds? Because augmented reality is the great technology that can bring these two worlds together. So uh, three years ago um, I started with a, fr a friend, Artivive, um, chasing the idea of augmented reality arts to see where it can go and also to see uh, how many creatives would be interested in the space. Um, and I have some examples for you. So imagine um, that you're in a gallery, in a museum, and you send, see this exhibition where artists uh, interpreted poster as a medium in a new way. So they're using Artivive, the tool, to create their own extensions to uh, mediums that they are already out there for, for many, many years. And you can see how um, the narrative starts in the reality and something that we can relate to, posters, and goes into the digital space continuing the story. So it's somehow a glimpse to the future, or is it the future? So I think it's bringing these two worlds together, the traditional arts and digital, how the future of art will look like. Um, and uh, please do check some of our uh, social media accounts to see some of the greatest projects that we um, have done and also our artists did, like in this example, uh, where an artist uh, recreated the Little Prince story in augmented reality. And this exhibition was such a big success um, that um, it was shown in many countries and then afterwards a book was produced. So you can buy the book of this exhibition having the whole stories build together and experience in augmented reality. And um, we see also of all ages from five to 80 being really interested in interacting with the space. Because the moment that you're going to an exhibition, to a gallery um, or to a museum, you go to experience something new. And this is what it's uh, offering. Um, people are already having the hardware in their pockets and they're going to spend one to three hours in a museum to experience something new. And um, sometimes the art is very cryptic. Sometimes the art on the wall is hard to understand. So you have to take the audio guide and, and understand how um, the art was meant to be and what was the story of the artist. But what if the artwork, like in this example, comes to life and tell its own story? Um, a little bit about Artivive to give you a little bit of uh, frame. Um, we started three years ago, like I mentioned, and we have more than 50,000 artists working with our platform. You can imagine um, Artivive as a platform where artists are creating their own uh, artworks. They are connecting the traditional art piece in the reality with a digital layer. Um, and it's so easy that we have artists that are 80 years old, um, and maybe use the computer just for emails and Artivive because um, they find a way they're already interacting with digital content through the mobile phones and tablets, and they always find a way how they can use this space for their own artworks. Um, but we also have um, uh, worked and we are still working with many museums around the world because they also feel the pressure to offer something new. And I think also with the times right now, uh, this pressure will be uh, bigger and bigger. And I will talk a little bit about museums um, and afterwards. 
um, Artevav is also teached at 40 universities because it's easy for professors to teach both worlds. You still have to learn how to create an illustration, how to make a painting, how to do a photograph, how to uh, put together a poster, but you can also use the digital space to extend it. So it's very easy entry um, also for universities to explore the space and give it to the students to see how they can use it in their projects. Uh, we are present in more than 92 countries around the world through the community that we have built. Um, we um, and the artists organized more than 450 exhibitions um, and we are hosting around 70,000 artworks at the time. So uh, they're getting more and more, uh, which uh, makes us very happy. We also have a very um, steep uh, growth and traction for the last months, we see that there is really a need uh, where we're not really spending money on marketing. Everything is organic. So people find the way to us because the need is there. Um, and through the whole exhibitions and all the projects that we have done, we have uh, more than half a million people using this app. Uh, but I was mentioning the museum. So this is one of the first projects that we have done. Uh, and it's with a museum in Vienna called Albertina. Um, and what we did um, together with the museum was through an workshop understand uh, what are the needs um, and where they would like to explore and see how they can use the space. So we sat together with the curators of an exhibition and tried to understand each piece. Um, work together also with local artists to create the content. Um, so we have different approaches for the different artworks. And when people are coming to the museum, maybe people who have already have seen this exhibition, um, they can see a totally new face, they can see a totally new content without the exhibition being changed. Um, during this project, um, we did some surveys, we um, looked at how people are interacting and because we constructed Artifact so easy to use, um, people are just jumping in and jumping from one artwork to the other. And in the interviews afterwards, we learned that they like the easy um, and uh, up-to-date way how information is transmitted because audio guys which are still great have a lot of information but it's so abstract you have to understand uh, what it's saying and also find it in the artwork and um, sometimes it's five to six minutes so if you listen to 10 pieces it's almost an hour uh, we can solve the same content in 45 seconds. Maybe it's not going so deep, but it's uh, transporting the same information. Um, and it's much easier to understand because you can also see the artwork and also hear the audio piece. Um, in the service, like I mentioned, when people are exiting the, the museums, everybody, 99% of the people that we ask remembered the augmented reality extended artworks because they emphasized, they understood, they had an emotional connection looking through the phone and also to the original. This was the first thing that uh, museums and maybe also galleries were afraid of, that people are not looking at the artwork anymore, but they're looking at the screen. Um, the people are already looking at the screen because they're coming with a phone into the museum and instead of looking at the artworks, they're looking at notification messages and they're always with the phone. And what we're doing is taking the phone away and giving him that back to use it to consume art. So in this case, um, people were looking at the screen, understanding what's happening, and also then looking at the original to understand where it is, and then finding the information that they received through the screen in the painting at the same moment is like connecting with the, with the painting. So um, also they can um, use the, the content and consume the content in, in 10 minutes, maybe already seen 10 artworks and understand them. So it's much easier to interact and it's the right uh, medium also uh, to consume art. Um, if you want to try it out, um, I will um, deliver or <laughs> I will uh, offer you a link to uh, where you can go and download this presentation as well as some of the artworks um, to test uh, with our app. But you can also go to um, albertina.at, they're offering now the augmented reality uh, exhibition also to use uh, at home because the museum is closed, uh, but we're looking forward to the time uh, where they're opening. We already have some discussions uh, with museums around Europe, which will open uh, now end of May, beginning of June, and they have a big problem. Um, and the big problem is that uh, most museums in Europe and many museums also in the US, um, they um, are building on tourists. Uh, tourists are the main 
uh, income uh, and cash cow because they don't have to change anything in the museum and people are coming because they're visiting the city and they also want to see the art. But what happens if you want to win over new target groups and also the community? Um, you have to, as a museum, offer something new. Um, and um, most of the cases for now to date is interactive experiences and not only consuming, but also creating where the museum can be the hotspot uh, where it offers um, the community and the artists, uh, local artists, the opportunity to work with the art pieces. Um, and then they don't have to change anything in the museum because they already have this um, very um, elaborate um, uh, collections in the different museums and they can use this to create new content and new experiences. Um, art becomes more approachable is exactly what um, I mentioned before, because um, going to an exhibition where maybe don't know the artist, it's very hard to get uh, to understand the whole artworks and exhibition. So um, it's, it's much easier if you have a hint and through augmented reality, you can have a better understanding of the artworks and it's much approachable. It's not something that it's on the wall and you're on the side, the side of the artwork, but it's something that it's melting through your phone, through augmented reality. Another good part is that there is no additional hardware required. Uh, people are already coming with the best hardware in their pockets. You, we just have to motivate them to use it. And because um, we watch people going into museums is the only piece that they're taking when they're going to the museum. Also winter, they leave with the coats and everything that they have, but the phone is coming with them. So um, we gave them also the opportunity to use it. And they are there to experience something new. So it will be not um, convincing them to download the app uh, because they're already in the museum to experience this. Um, there are no maintenance costs because just the content um, that has to be created. Um, there's no hardware, like I said, there are no beacons or no additional costs uh, involved besides the internet and uh, maybe paying for the for the content and for using Artivire. Um, and museums can, instead of investing in hardware, invest in content. Um, let the community uh, interact and let the community submit artwork. So maybe for the same exhibition, they can have every month another digital extension. So the community is creating and therefore the community will also join back to the museums to see uh, with the families and friends um, how um, the creation that they did uh, is integrating in the exhibition. Um, involved the local artist community, I think I emphasize this a lot, and something that is extremely new for museums is the free statistics. Uh, because museums nowadays know when people are going in and when people are going out, they don't know um, at what they're looking and for how long they're looking and what they're interested in. Maybe through this, they can learn about more, uh, more about the, the visitors and also about the exhibitions and the space and how they can use it better. Um, I'm almost done with the time. So uh, here's the link that you can follow. It's artifact.com, A-W-E. Um, and also please feel free to uh, follow us on the uh, different uh, social media accounts from Instagram to LinkedIn. Um, you can see there a lot of projects that we have done around the world, like uh, this one in uh, the Bay Area in Auckland, together with an Austrian um, street artist. Um, if you want to try it out, um, it's at the Flex store. I think it's the 15th with Martin Luther King. Um, so go there and try it out. We had people coming from all over the Bay Area um, to see uh, this uh, wonderful augmented reality piece of art. Um, thank you very much. I'm open for questions um, and looking forward um, to see uh, yeah, uh, how you see augmented reality art. Thank you very much. Hi, Sergio. What, a, what an artistic talk. Um, I love how you're incorporating with museums. We have a lot of questions, but we only have time for one. Um, so we're going to go with Julia B. Butt. Uh, she wants to know, how do you go about deciding what effects to do? Do you work with the museum's curators and or artists, if living? Yeah, so um, our idea is not to create content to just create a tool and uh, work on the experience also for the visitor and for the museum. 
to let uh, people interact with artworks. So um, it's a um, connection between the traditional artwork and the extension of it. So what we're doing mostly when we're working with institution, we are uh, offering a workshop where we're sitting together with the curators and with the artists um, for half day or day to understand what they want to achieve. And in this way, we can give some ideas. And the best way with augmented reality in general and digital is that you can change it. So they can start with the pilot and see how uh, the visitors are reacting and how they interact with the content and how it's uh, um, working. And then afterwards decide if they want to change it or not. So it's, I think, a process. Like also Artivab is evolving uh, with each week, with each iterate, iteration that it has. Absolutely. The world of emerging technology. Well, thank you very much. Um, we are out of time. How can people reach you? Because I know there's a lot of questions in the chat. Maybe you can jump in and answer them. Yeah, How sure. I will. Um, uh, otherwise, it's like just Sergio with a U at the end at rtvive.com. Um, that's my email address. Just write me and I'm more than happy to jump on calls and answer all the questions and afterwards. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day.